Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of Rodney Hash. Today we're going to be doing an extra special in-depth terpene analysis on one of my personal favorite terpenes, linalool. Now if you guys ever want to know how is linalool going to affect my experience with cannabis, where can I find it outside of cannabis if I do find these traits desirable, and what are some of the actual med medical benefits that have been proven in research studies like double bind placebo research studies that we can actually kind of sort of weed out what the actual things that this specific terpene is doing and how do we know that and maybe even a little bit more as to like what terpenes I would suggest for what specific experience you might be seeking if you want to know all those things you're going to want to watch this video all the way to the end made my way up off the corner now we worldwide taking over I'm a motivated stoner up early every morning, getting to the money like I want it, I'm a motivated stone. So, first things first, where is linalool found outside of cannabis? That way I kind of have something to identify it to. So the most important one that everyone really knows is lavender. So if you ever heard of lavender essential oils, you kind of already have a semi-good idea of what linalool is going to do to you. Another couple places that you can find it is bergamot, uh, jasmine, earl grey tea, basil, thyme, or oregano. Like it's all over the place. In fact, if I bet you, if you go to Bath and Body Works or Bed Bath and Beyond or any of those places where you find really, really top level essential oil fragrance soaps, things like that, I bet you if you go to the back of the bottle and you go to the ingredients and you go to the very bottom, you're more than likely going to find things like linalool more than likely. You might even find some limonene. So where do you find it? All over the place. It's in nature. It's We use it in the fragrance industry and we use it for tons of medical purposes, which we're going to go over real soon. If you're enjoying this content, I ask that you guys leave a like, subscribe, and maybe even follow me on some other social media platforms such as Instagram or the social club app or if you're not watching it on YouTube then follow me on YouTube. I really do appreciate all your guys' support and it really does go a long way. How does linalool make me feel? Me personally, I usually kind of feel sleepy, I feel relaxed, I feel calm, but more often than not it really does depend on what I pair it with. Now if I'm looking to feel sleepy, Generally, I'm going to pair it with something like Myrcene or Caryophyllene or uh, really more indica -y strains. I'm going to look for more linalool dominant, indica dominant strains because those are the ones that are going to tend to give me more sleepy effects. Now, if you've already been looking at indica strains and you can't figure out why it is that some do this and others do that, this is why. That linalool is the one that is going to be that sedative effect. Now, if you pair it with something like limonene or terpenaline even that are more uplifting euphoric really make you want to kind of go for a hike in the woods type of strains this is going to be pairing with that that will make you feel calm relaxed but still happy and you could still operate and you could function in fact i challenge any one of you guys that say that i don't like sativas find a sativa that has a large amount of linalool in it and i bet you any money you won't have anxiety and if that one causes you anxiety, look and see if there's pinene in it, either alpha or beta, because both of them have been shown to help with focus. However, that same trigger is what's causing you to feel almost overstimulated and you almost get paranoid. So by avoiding pinene and adding linalool to your sativas, you'll get a better effect out of those sativas where you'll feel alert, uplifted, but still feel relaxed. So. Now, what are some of the medical benefits? So now we go over what are some of the proven medical benefits. I will also say a lot of these, or a lot of this information, I'm actually getting out of a book called The Cannabis Terpene Experience. Hats off to uh, Dr. Jason Lapoy, because without him, none of this stuff would be possible. He is a PhD graduate on the frontiers working of cannabis and botanical derived terpenes. So, Definitely going to want to give this book a check or check this book out if you're enjoying any of this content because it's pretty important. So, the first one that I'm going to go over is as a sleep aid. 
Now, they did do a study on how many patients was it? It looks like 19 patients. They had dementia and other symptoms like that. They were having troubles with their sleep patterns. Uh, they gave them, a majority of them, they gave lavender essential oils, but they also gave them other essential oils that were very high in linalool. What they did with these patients is they had them put it on a washcloth and then put that washcloth underneath their pillow so that way throughout the night it would off gas and you would smell the linalool terpenes. So those terpenes would directly be hitting your nose and doing all the things that it would do as a terpene would do. So what, what did it show? It actually showed that a majority of the patients who had higher doses of linalool throughout the night got a st st statistically significant amount of sleep in comparison to those that had the placebo, therefore showing that this does work as a sleep aid. So if you're looking for something on cannabis side that is more sleep leaning, you're probably going to want to go for again an indica that is very strong or very high in linalool terpenes. Another one that we're going to go over is actually one that I wish I would have had last night because I burned myself. Uh, linalool, if you put it on neat, which means as far as essential oils go, neat is when you don't have a carrier oil. So this lavender extract directly from the lavender plant with no carrier oils gets put onto the burn right after it happens, and it'll actually clear up that burn. It won't allow it to, to start literally burning the skin. It's kind of weird, but it's a cool little thing. Um, another one that is really near and dear to my heart is Alzheimer's and dementia. So they did a couple studies and they've done quite a few studies on it showing that linalool, especially when paired with carifiline, let me back up a step. So dementia and Alzheimer's, dementia is a, a version of Alzheimer's where it has gotten to such a degree in which it hits full-blown dementia. For those that don't know, there's these things called beta amyloid plaques. Sorry if I totally just butchered that one. Not a doctor, just a stoner. Um, but the more beta amyloid plaques that you have in your blood flow, the more uh, more likely and more susceptible you are to Alzheimer's. And then once you hit a certain amount of those beta amyloid plaques, that's when they hit you with full blown dementia. So. By combining these two terpenes, beta carophyllene and linalool, they have shown that it can reduce those amount of beta amyloid plaques in people's blood, therefore potentially operating as a potential therapeutic for Alzheimer's and dementia. That's fucking huge because we don't have that. Um, there really isn't a lot of treatments when it comes to Alzheimer's and dementia, and it, it, it hurts because it's something that runs on both sides of my family, so it's something that... I generally tend to try and find in my cannabis so that way I can add, at least try and counter it in some way, shape, and or form. So uh, the next thing that we're going to talk about is as another one that's super near and dear to my heart because my mom is a major stroke survivor and has seizures all the time, but linalool is an anticonvulsant, meaning that it prevents you from having seizures. Um, Again, if you go and look at the uh, cannabis terpene or cannabis terpene experience, Jason Lapointe, a neurologist, goes very in depth on why exactly that is. So, if you want to know more, by all means, check that book out. But it does work as a. Uh, uh, they did studies on mice. They did studies on people, and it's it's shown that it does work pretty well. So, you know, if you're you're in. Uh, survivor of a stroke or you have seizures all the time or epileptic look for something with a little little beta carrier finally and maybe it'll help you there's only one way to find out all right guys if you guys are liking this content again don't forget to leave a like subscribe i'll be seeing you guys next time on the next episode of rodney hash